Hello, and welcome to Order Within, navigating a world of endless chaos and crisis. Many of us are experiencing inner turmoil, insecurity, anxiety, fears, and isolation. These feelings are only being amplified by news cycles, social media, and never-ending political madness. How do we find our way out of the chaos? How do we find strength within ourselves? How do we find meaning in a world driven by materialism? These questions and many more I aim to answer on the show. My goal is to be a trusted guide on your journey to selfhood. May you find what you seek. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm your host, Brandon Ward. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of self-awareness. I love the topic of self-awareness and how it can help our lives and the lack of self-awareness and the pain and problems that can create in our lives as well. Apologize in advance here. I've got a little bit of a head cold, so maybe a little over little stuffy and whatnot, but hopefully it won't ruin the content so much. All right, so we're, we're going to cover on a few things in today's show. We're going to talk about what self-awareness is, what we can learn from it, the downfalls of lacking self-awareness, how to develop self-awareness, and a few other things there. But the definition of self-awareness is going to be different for everyone. And for me, the way I think about this is really trying to simplify it as much as possible. Self-awareness to me is ultimately recognition of our thoughts, our feelings, our sense of self, our presence, our place, where we are today, our ability to observe ourselves, to be aware of ourselves, and that awareness would be recognition of a range of thoughts, feelings, emotions, and existence pieces, aspects to existence. So recognizing that, observing ourselves, observing our mind, our thoughts, observing how we operate on a daily basis, observing our presence in the world, the way we operate, the way we move, the way we exist, I find that it's often when we are still and silent that we begin to raise our awareness. And so awareness to me is something that others, just like many skills and talents, all of us have ranges of it. But it's a scale, and it is a skill that can be developed as I've seen it in others and in myself. You can absolutely increase the level of self-awareness. You can also decrease our level of self-awareness based on the way we're living. And so being that I see this as a skill, it's something that can be developed with commitment, practice, consistency. So it is something that we can learn. And it's a lifelong journey as I see mastery and growth and committing ourselves to this practice, this process over our lifetime is an important component of it because ultimately we're going to have bad days. We're going to be frustrated. We're going to be annoyed. We're going to fall off the wagon, so to speak. We're going to have days where we're caught up in the whirlwinds of life and we forget about these things. That's totally okay. The important thing is that we always come back. We always restart. We always start anew. That's the practice. The practice is beginning again, regardless of what happened yesterday. And so we can learn self-awareness. And I'm hoping to illuminate how we may go about doing that in today's episode. And also explain the pitfalls of what happens when we lack self-awareness. And I think you're seeing a lot of that right now at a societal level. Many of us lack self-awareness. And it creates 
challenges. One, your growth is going to be extremely limited. And if you if you lack self-awareness, how can you grow? How can you become aware of your limits, your shortcomings, weaknesses, whatever you want to call them, things that are holding you back? How can you become aware of those things if we don't develop self-awareness? We don't, we don't spend the time to become aware of those things. So the practice of self-awareness is a skill and tool that enables us to grow as individuals, as humans. But when we lack that skill, we miss opportunities to understand who we are, to see where our shortcomings lie, and work on improving them because ultimately we're not aware of them. Alcoholics Anonymous says the first step is recognition, awareness to a problem. So I think self-awareness is a big component of that right now because ultimately if we don't recognize ourselves and where we are today, then it's going to ultimately limit our growth. And also what tends to happen when we lack self-awareness is we're not tuned in and keyed in on our own efforts, our own thoughts, our own mind, our own state. We don't realize the power that we hold. So we focus so much of our attention and energy outside of ourselves. And that practice of focusing outside of ourselves, again, limits our growth because growth happens when we look within, reflect onto ourselves, and make changes relative to what we find. But if we don't take the time to find anything, what can you change? So that growth is limited based on our inability to see things, connect and understand. And our inability, our lack of growth is limited. The lack of self-awareness is limited here around growth with others as well in our relationships and our ability to help other people and our ability to be of service in a meaningful way. Because ultimately the relationship that we have with ourselves is going to define the relationship that we have with others and the way that we treat ourselves and the way we engage and interact with ourselves is the way we will interact and and engage with others. It's our self-relationship is a reflection of how we're going to engage in other relationships. So it doesn't only inhibit our own abilities and growth, it inhibits our abilities to grow and be there for the people that we care about in our lives as well. So it's a it's an inner and outer impact here. And again, like we our inner world reflects our outer world, I should say, reflects our inner states. And so when we're not building self-awareness to refine and improve and become aware of our inner worlds, it becomes very chaotic. And you're seeing that a lot in our world today. We're living in a very chaotic disorganized world and I really genuinely believe that's a reflection of our own inner chaotic disorganized states and I think what comes from that from this lack of self-awareness are these unintended consequences most people mean well they really do and but when we lack self-awareness there are consequences that happen there's things that grow when we refuse to look or not even necessarily refuse, but when we don't look, sometimes those things that are limiting our growth or habitually not good for our growth that are, that are restricting our abilities to expand and live a more fulsome, meaningful life. When we, when we're unaware of those things, it creates negativity in our lives. Those things that we're unaware of now grow. They grow in the shadows. That's the concept of the shadow self is the unconscious self, and which means unaware. We're not conscious of it. We're not aware of it. And so with that, because our inability to see those things, those challenges, those limitations, those negative components that we have not yet healed or addressed grow and influence our lives behind the scenes often in our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, which ends up shaping the way we interact with the world around us, the people that we care about, the way we interact with ourselves, the way we talk to ourselves, the way the thoughts that come in and out of our heads. 
this creates unintended negative consequences because ultimately problems can grow huge when we don't pay attention to them. It's ignoring issues and it's ignoring things does not mean they don't exist. And so that's the problem is it, when we ignore these things, there are aspects that grow out of this, these pieces that live within us when they are not recognized morph into their own things and often become far worse than what they originally started as because they have the chance to grow out of control. And as an example, if we have a drinking problem or we're addicted to social media or we're addicted to porn or we're spending too much money, whatever it may be, there's the endless things, eating, challenges, when we're unaware of those things, we simply operate in an automatic nature, empowering those destructive habits. And so they just continue to live and expand. They slowly creep into our lives. So drinking, right? If we have a drinking issue, if we're not aware of it, and we continue to drink and drink and drink and drink, and we do it every day, and our health is declining, our relationships are declining, our financial status is declining, the state of our family is declining, if we have a family, like our work is declining, it slowly slides into all areas of our lives, and that creates unintended consequences for our lack of awareness around certain issues. So that's just a specific example, but you can replicate that throughout our lives in, in bigger ways and in smaller ways. So that lack of self-awareness creates these consequences that often we don't intend. And as they say, the, pay, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. And so I would also argue that it's paved with unintended intentions and consequences. Like our unintended consequences create this path as well. Because there are things that we don't consider or recognize and therefore they come into a life of their own and influence and impact us in a way that we do not desire. And then finally, this lack of self-awareness can lead to a destruction of self and others in this way, because if we continue to, to ignore ourselves or not acknowledge ourselves, then naturally, just as the example I gave a second ago around drinking, that behavior is destructive as it continues to operate and our inability to see that will over time erode ourself and will bring us down ultimately and again take away all the glory and beauty and all this wonderful capacity that lives within us. But when we're unaware that self, that sacred self inside of us it's just slowly eroded. It's uncared for. It's just like anything in life, right? If you have a garden and you're trying to grow something, if you don't tend to it, if you don't make sure that the weeds aren't growing in it, if it's not getting enough sunlight, if it's not getting enough water, if there aren't bugs there eating it or whatever it is, there's all the things that you have to look for. You have to make sure that the soil's right and, and that it's getting the proper amount of water when it needs it. And so if we're not doing those things, then naturally they will decay. So that's what happens to ourself over time and others is they decay, lack due to lack of attention and awareness. And so this decay, this destruction of self and others just expands the same way with these unintended consequences. Because without recognition, Nothing can really grow or change. That recognition is what makes it so impactful. That's what brings the possibility of change into our life is the recognition of something existing. And when we deny ourself, our inner selves, then ultimately that erodes over time. And what we do to ourselves, we do to others. And so when we don't recognize that, self within us, when we are unaware of that self within us, we do the same thing to others, the same thing that we care about for the people that we care about in our lives. It's the same thing that happens. This is how 
over time, this can destroy ourselves and the people that we care about because of not seeing and connecting with who we are, our inability to be aware of ourselves and our environment and others and the needs that we all have. We all have needs, and it's our responsibility as individuals to uncover and just and just determine what those needs are for ourselves and then to do everything in our power to meet and support those needs as much as we can to parent ourselves. I've done an episode on this before, but parenting ourselves and nurturing ourselves is really foundationally built around self-awareness and how we treat ourselves and learn about who we are by spending that time and dedicating ourselves to who we are. And it's interesting because when we ignore or are unaware of our inner self, there's a suppression of the self that ends up happening. Because when we are unaware, we press down the sacred self, and there's a void there that must be filled. And what often ends up happening is it's that social self that ends up coming into that void. And I've talked about this as well before, is we have an inner self and a social self. And our social self is a mask that we wear to exist within society. Now, we all do this to some level. It's healthy to do this at some level. It's simply necessary for our survival. And we are a communal species. So it's our community presence. It's our community personality. But the difference is when our inner self and our social self are very misaligned, there's a massive disconnect between those two presents, those two personalities, if you will, those two expressions of ourselves. There's huge problems that can come from that because ultimately we're living a large lie. The goal is to align our inner self with our social self to be true to who we are and live an authentic life. And so when we don't do that, this kind of animal self-centered personality emerges because we're not connecting to the roots of who we are, which is a cosmic self. It's an internal being, right? Like we have literally this access to an internal existence that's there waiting for us, that all we have to do is embrace it and accept it and understand what that means. And then we instantly start living an expanded life because the context of existence is different now. It's not chaotic, random, everyone survival of the fittest, everyone does whatever they need to do for themselves at the expense of everyone else. You deepen your relationship to existence and you tap into that eternal self, which expands beyond earth, expands beyond this single life and looks at us in its totality and the universal adventure and journey that we are all on. But when we don't recognize that animal, self-centered personality emerges, and the personality is often very driven only by its own needs, regardless of what that means for others in the world that we live in. And this, in my mind, when you look at narcissism, is built around the lack of self-awareness. And when you see our society and how narcissistic of a society we are, how materialistic we are, how we're driven by the opinions of others, how we so much care for status and recognition of our position in society and presenting narratives and stories to the world, presenting images to the world that depict us as these perfect no, all-knowing beings, when the reality is that none of us know it all, and all of us are figuring it out. No one has all the answers. All of us are a mess. We're all figuring it out. All of us. All of us are broken. So just, like, level setting on that instantly puts us into a humbled state of, like, wait a second. We're all, we're all screwed up here. We're all trying to figure it out. We're all on this planet learning and exploring and growing as humans. So the idea that somehow all of us have, some of us have this figured out while others don't, it's just goofy to me because there's still so much that we're all learning. But 
getting back to kind of narcissism and how this is built out of a lack of self-awareness, narcissism is ultimately it, you when the interesting thing about narcissistic behavior is that it's predicated on a lack of self. It's the disconnect of the self. We've suppressed ourselves, and this often happens because of destructive environments we've grown up in, abuse, trauma. I'm not saying that we intentionally do this. Many of us have this happen. This happens because of our environment, circumstances we grew up in, and we were never given a chance to really connect with ourselves in a deep and meaningful way. And so that creates a void. But what has to fill that void is that narcissistic self. Because when we lack awareness of who we truly are, and we don't realize that we have this wonderful gift within us, and that there is so much that we have to leverage and use in this world, when we don't realize that, when we don't recognize that we're more than just this fleshy body, that we're more than just this earthly being, it's very lonely, sad, isolating. I get that. I know that. I've been so much in those dark spaces. But because we lack, when we lack that self-awareness, when we lack that awareness of, of our true selves, this narcissistic self emerges. And the narcissistic self is effectively, it's really, it's a mechanism of the earthly personality. It's a defense mechanism to, to gain what we need because we're not doing it in a, a conscious manner. We're not doing it in a thoughtful and a, aware manner. It's operating behind the scenes in an unconscious way. Narcissism goes about meeting needs based on an unconscious way of life. So that often means that there will be consequences for others in our lives based on what we need and our lack of ability to understand what we need. So we go around and behave in this very self-centered manner unconsciously. That's irony is that narcissism is very self-centered and almost, uh, and everything becomes about me, so to speak, right? What people can do for us, what I want, it's always about me. But the irony is that it's built around the fact that the true self was never nurtured. And what comes into this place is really this weak, smaller self. This is a very common thing happening in our world. It's narcissism is a very common thing in our world. And you can see it really all around us when you begin to learn about these concepts and when you understand the power of self-awareness and what it can do for us and how to develop it. But until then, like you see it everywhere. It's just interesting though that the narcissistic self is often what fills that void and then that's that, that kind of self-serving self creates many problems until we bring awareness to our own challenges and our own hurt and where we're off and starting to recognize that behavior. It's amazing what watching and observing our own behavior, just simply watching, can do to things. It really can transform our lives when we just sit and be and give ourselves the attention and awareness that we deserve to simply listen to what is calling to us. And often, Initially, it's the dark and scary emotions. I'm going to do an episode on navigating and dealing with dark feelings and painful feelings and things of that nature. But those are often sometimes the things that can emerge initially and that can be scary. But when we have the tools to handle that and when we can push through those dark and scary feelings, that's where our development lies. That's where our growth lies. That's where the power truly comes into play. And so that gets into to developing self-awareness. How do we go about developing self-awareness? And for, it, it begins with first spending time alone, spending time with ourselves. That could literally just be sitting in nature, could be sitting in your room. The key is no distractions. If you have music on, it, it should be non-lyrics. It should be more of background noise to help you relax, to help distract the monkey mind that's constantly needing distraction. Because ultimately, when we don't have that inner self, we have to fill up 
that void from outside of ourselves. When we don't have power from within, we have to rely on the external world for our source of strength and power. So that means activities, that means people, that means endless consumption to match our needs. So we're constantly taking from the world where we're trying to get to a point of giving. And that's how developing self-awareness can allow us to get to this point and develop that power from within. But that begins with spending time alone, not with other people, not by yourself watching TV or on the internet or Netflix or whatever. By yourself, with your thoughts, sitting there. Having a journal could be helpful too, or a recorder if you prefer to talk. I found that, so I've spent a lot of time journaling and writing, but I also found that I really gained a ton when I could just, I would talk to myself. I would literally walk around my room by myself and I would just talk about things. How you doing, man? How you feeling? Like, how are you feeling right now? Trying to generate conversation. Now that might seem crazy. I get it. But I'm telling you, it's extremely powerful and effective. And what can happen is we're giving a voice to ourselves for the first time oftentimes in those moments, whether it's journaling, whether it's recording into an audio recorder, whether it's just talking out loud. We're giving ourselves space to speak and think and be and finally be heard. And that's the power of it. But we can't get there unless we'd spend time alone. We literally, I, I, when I was going through a lot of the darkest points of my life, I just hold myself off in my room. No matter where I was, if I was living with other people, whatever it was, I would just go into my room and I would do my own thing, or I would go out in nature, and I would just walk around, and I would be outside, and I would just look at the sky, look at the stars, look at the trees, and I would just allow myself to be, and I would watch my mind, I would watch all the thoughts come into my mind, and I would spend a lot of time alone. So the, it begins with spending time alone, without distractions, without our phones, without social media, any of that, we sit and it's going to be boring. It's going to be hard. You're going to feel uncomfortable. That's good. It's natural. That's the beginning of the process. Like anything that's new, we're going to be uncomfortable initially. So you got to embrace the fact that you're going to feel uncomfortable when you're doing this. And so by doing that, will allow us to slowly get more comfortable in this state, in this space of being with ourselves. And so when you spend time with yourself, you can begin to observe our behaviors, our mind, just and all, I'm, all you do is watch. You observe. Just be present. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to take action. You're not trying to change anything. You're just sitting. You're just observing. You're watching your behaviors, watching your urges. Like how many times do you have the impulse to check your phone? How many times do you have the impulse to check your messages, your social media? How many times do you have an impulse to play a game or... Whatever, whatever you do, I don't. We do all kinds of things to to distract ourselves, and eventually we create healthy relationships with these things where we are conscious about it. Doesn't mean you can't play games or you can't watch TV or do any of that stuff. That's not what I'm saying at all. But we have to be conscious about our relationship with those things. And so many things in our lives right now are unconscious and they're ruling our existence, and we're not aware of it. And that's because we haven't developed self awareness to observe these things, to see how we're behaving, to see how we're living, to see how our impulses are driving our behavior. And when we're unaware of it, the world can easily manipulate us. And that is what's happening so much. All of us are being manipulated. That's just outright. It's just whether we're aware of it or not, which allows us to reduce the impact or not. And that's the key with self-awareness is having that strength and power. And so there's a lot of benefits that come from that. First and foremost, you just start to see things differently. You start to realize, wow, I'm not really, maybe I'm not doing this. Maybe this isn't coming from me. Maybe this isn't my own desires really at the end of the day. Maybe this isn't actually what I want. Maybe I'm tired of doing these things. Maybe I don't want to watch that video. Or maybe I don't want to look at my phone for five hours mindlessly. Maybe that's not what I'm trying to do. You start to realize where we are 
misaligned with who we truly are. And you also will really start to get a sense of how chaotic our minds are and how near we are to our impulses. And that's totally okay. Recognizing this. That's what I'm saying. This is not about judgment. It's going to be uncomfortable this first bit here in these early stages, but that's the point. It's totally okay. It's totally okay. No matter what you feel in this moment, no matter what you're observing, no matter how chaotic it may be, it's completely okay. So you have to embrace that. You understand that's part of the process and it's going to suck initially. But ultimately, this is by doing this and you do this a little bit every day. Just do it a little bit every day. Even if it starts with 15 minutes, just even five Five minutes, nothing, sitting alone, doing nothing. Start with five minutes a day and build from there. It will grow and you will start to realize the value of it. And eventually you'll start to, you'll crave it because you realize how nourishing it is for yourself and the power that it holds and what you can learn in those moments. And you'll start to get a sense of who you really are, the vibe that you hold, the energy that you carry. And you can really start to get to know yourself and really love and learn about who you are and embrace that connection. That's a beautiful process. It's it's unbelievable what can come out of this process and how simple it can be. But simple does not mean easy. You got to consistently do this. So doing it a little bit every day, starting with small buckets, five to 10 minutes, and then growing from there. But self-awareness is how we hold ourselves accountable. How do our thoughts align with our actions right now? Like when we're observing ourselves, how, do our, how does our mind align with our life and how we're living? How do the thoughts that are coming into our mind align with how we're living? Are we telling ourselves that we suck, that we have no talent, no abilities, but we're trying to do all these things in the world? Are we telling ourselves that we can't do anything and that this is hopeless and it doesn't matter what we do, that we're pathetic and we will do nothing? Like how far off are from what we want with our life to where we are today? Where's the gap? That's the recognition. That's how we can start to hold ourselves accountable too because that's the gap that we slowly begin to bridge. And it's done with empathy. This is not meant to judge yourself. Do not judge yourself. Whatever you find is completely okay and acceptable. I promise you that it's completely okay and acceptable. So understanding where you are today and what you want and looking at your thoughts and your mind and where your actions are today as well, that alignment or misalignment, that gap is how we begin to hold ourselves accountable and develop self-accountability. So how, how does what we say align with our outer life? That's a key component of that. Looking at our inner world and looking at our outer world. How aligned or misaligned are those two worlds? And when we do this, we begin to set a new standard of living from within. This simple process, now it it goes deeper than this and it extends. There's components that we'll go into in in other episodes that go beyond this, but honestly, that's it. That's my action for you. Just begin today. Start with 10 minutes today with yourself, observing, being, existing, and just begin to practice self-awareness, just to begin to observe yourself and watch what happens. Do this consistently each day, 10 minutes a day for a month and reflect on that 30-day period. I guarantee you're going to change and be a different person and it's going to be a positive change. It happens. It's a process that begins to take over that is natural and it's our natural state begins to emerge. And that new standard of living is set from within that we begin to understand and uncover and build upon. That strength that beauty, that vision, that courage, that authenticity is inside of you and it's waiting to be discovered and the power of self-awareness is how we discover it. And once we begin to discover it and nurture it and love it, we can begin to share it with the world. We We can begin to benefit from that beautiful and powerful self. All right, y'all, that's the power of self-awareness. I really love these concepts. I hope you find this information valuable. I want to hear you practice it. So I'm challenging you right now. If you're not doing this, take 10 minutes each day, do that for a month, and then reflect on your experience. And if you do that, let me know. Shoot me a comment. Send me a message. I'm on Twitter. You can message me on Substack as well. But let me know how it's going. I would love to hear 
what this experience has been like for you, how you are in, a, in your awareness to self-awareness, and what this has done for you. But until next time, y'all, I really appreciate the ears, the listening. Hope you're finding value in what we're doing here at Order Within. And catch you on the flip side, y'all. Thank you for listening to Order Within. If you found the episode helpful, please consider sharing, rating, and subscribing. New episodes will be released every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, y'all.